investigation has revealed very troubling information about how we get our chocolate. In particular, Mars products like M&Ms and Snickers that are some of Americans' favorites. Yes, they are. Deborah. Pa- now, I'm going to say this. I'm not a Mars bars guy. I am not a Mars bars guy. I, wherever I live, they don't even sell that shit. Shout out to Honky Kong, man. They don't even sell Mars bars anywhere I'm at, man. I'm from D.C. I'd never seen a fucking Mars bar. In any fucking um, 7-Eleven or any corner store. I've never seen one. Maybe that's just me. But yeah. Kit Kats. Um, junior Mints. I love Junior Mints. Snickers, really satisfies. Yeah, I like candy though, but it's a phase. Like I go like a years without eating any candy. Skittles and Starburst too, and then like I eat candy. Like I've been eating a lot of candy since Halloween, so I'm guilty, man. I'm guilty of this, man. Let's see how um we get our um how we get our chocolate in America, man. In 2023. That are some of Americans' favorites. Yes, they are. Deborah Pata traveled to Ghana for this story and found children, some as young as listen to this, five years old that were harvesting cocoa. Deborah's here with us now in the studio. Deborah, it's good to have you in person. Good to see you. Sorry, it's for a story like this. Good morning to you. A very good morning, Gail. Well, Mars did over $45 billion in annual sales last year, in large part from selling chocolates like those M&Ms and Snickers. It vowed to have systems in place to eradicate child labor from its supply chain by 2025. But we saw little evidence of this. Laboring in the blistering heat here as young as six slicing the grass with lethal ease their machetes nearly half the size of the smallest among them. These Ghanaian children are harvesting the cocoa that ends up in America's best-loved chocolates like M&Ms and Snickers. Instead of going to school, they are learning that sharp blades cut deep and big corporations make promises they seldom keep. We traveled across Ghana's remote cocoa belt, visiting small subsistence farms that supply U.S. chocolate giant Mars and found children working on every one of them. Mars boasts about rescuing thousands of children who are listed as beneficiaries of what it calls their robust monitoring system that keeps them off plantations and in schools. CBS News obtained copies of these lists from a whistleblower. We're going to try and find some of the children on these lists and see if the information checks out. Why it ain't no black reporter over there doing this shit? Why it's always a fucking white reporter over there doing this shit? You notice that? Wait, why they? Why the black reporters ain't never over here? They always fucking chasing the next fucking police brutality case. It's always some white woman over here doing this shit. In schools. CBS News obtained copies of these lists from a whistleblower. We're going to try and find some of the children on these lists and see if the information checks out. Our first stop, 15-year-old Munira. And your name, I think, is on this list. Is that you? Here she is, toiling away on her family farm, her life, since she was just five years old. School's a luxury she's hardly ever been. I feel sad. I want to be a like medical doctor, but they don't they don't have money to support me. The family harvested only one bag of cocoa the entire year. A 140 pound sack fetches around $115. Last year, field supervisors contracted by Mars. And this is all they gave you. Gave Manira a backpack and school books with the slogan. I am a child, I play, I go to school. In the nearly 18 months since then, nobody has checked to see if she is still in school. 
This Coco Field supervisor for the past 13 years spoke out on condition we hide his identity. Personally, I've made lists before. I've made a place before. And I can say on authority that almost every data, almost every data is cooked. Or incorrect. Or in, it's not correct. Nobody has come back to check as to whether it's true or not. CBS News spoke to nearly a dozen children on that list used by Mars. None of them were in school, nor had they been regularly monitored to ensure they attended classes. No. This is slavery, man. This is not like slavery. This is slavery. Working all day, those kids' backs are going to be shit. By the time they get to be like 25 and shit, bending over, doing that shit all day, their backs are going to be wrapped. This is slavery, man. This is how you get your chocolate, man. Salute the traveling lamp, man, coming through. No one came here ever? The few children that do go to school, instead of pencils, are carrying machetes. Put your hands up if you work on the cocoa farms. All these students told us they harvest cocoa either before or after school. We have repeatedly asked Mars for an interview. They declined every request. Hi, good morning. A security Hi. guard asked us to Thank leave you. their headquarters you when we went there. Can you please leave? Hi. And we you? even went Hi. to the CEO's Hi. home Hi. to try and get answers. No, sorry, he's not here. He's U.S. human here. rights lawyer Terry Collingsworth also wants answers. He's filed a proposed class action lawsuit for consumer fraud against American chocolate manufacturer Mars and others. They're telling the public that we're re rehabilitating this kid and then they're cynically coming here and just checking a box and they the kid is back working the next day. That's he fine. has collected statements from Ghanaian children working me. for Mars suppliers. Okay, thank you for being very brave. Like yeah. these little boys doing the backbreaking work of adult men, tiny hands <laughs> struggling with the dangerous work of hacking open cocoa pods the long blade narrowly missing this five-year-old's fingers. The owners of Mars are the third wealthiest. A five-year-old? <laughs> They're going to do this whole pile with a machete, man. I wouldn't trust a five-year-old with a fucking butter knife, man. You got a five-year-old peeling all these cocoa beans? That shit is crazy, my G. A five-year-old. And if that five-year-old tries to leave, they're going to beat the shit out of him. They're going to beat him into a coma if he tries to leave. Africa, they don't play. These little boys doing the backbreaking work of adult men, tiny hands struggling with the dangerous work of hacking open cocoa pods, the long blade narrowly missing this five year old's fingers. The owners of Mars are the third wealthiest family in the US, raking in billions every year, much of it from chocolate. Billions made on the backs of these young children. Oof. And late yesterday, Mars did send us a written statement where they condemn the use of child labor. <laughs> Shout out to this white lady for going over there and exposing this shit, man. You know them black, these black, big mouth, fucking loud mouth ass fucking troublemakers at? Where all the black troublemaker women is at, man? They're always stirring up trouble and shit in the news and shit. Where y'all at? 
Gupta denied pressurizing any field workers to fabricate data, but conceded more needs to be done. So they're not reason. denying that that footage you have is not authentic, right? So these kids are on these farms, they're, they're, they're farming these beans, it's dangerous work. What would it take for Mars to get behind an effort that would eradicate the mm. problem? Frankly, Tony, not a lot. If they spend some of the money that they use to fight lawsuits, this isn't the first one. $200 million could be going a long way to changing it. One mother said, all we need is bicycles so our kids can cycle to school. It's an hour away. They can't afford that. And more importantly... The school is an hour away on a bicycle. Pay the farmers more for their cocoa. I'm sure consumers would be thrilled yeah, I've, to I've know heard... their money's going to help kids go to school. Yes, fighting the lawsuits, I hear they're, they're quite litigious, but I'm sitting here with two packs of M&Ms in my purse right now, even as we speak. Mm. Now that we see the, the story like this, what should we do with this information? Mm. Well, I think right. what we need to do is pressurize these cocoa companies who signed a declaration more than 20 years ago to eradicate child labor to actually do it. This is a fixable problem. We don't often go to places where we feel that, but this is. Yes. Use that money, build schools, get these kids an education. Look at the potential. Chocolate is one of America's favorite treats, but a CBS News investigation found the cocoa used by candy giant Mars is harvested by impoverished children in Africa. You know what? Let's see who's let's see who's making the money off of this stuff, man. I know black people got to be be making some money off this stuff, right? Ghana is the world's second biggest producer of cocoa, but the country only earns about 2% of the $100 billion industry. <laughs> Ghana is the world's second biggest producer of cocoa, but the country only earns about 2% of the $100 billion industry. LRLRS coming through. Ghana is the world's second biggest producer of cocoa but the country only earns about 2% of the $100 billion industry. Let's get to 200 likes, man, early, man. 200 likes early, man. It leaves you speechless, man. Press one. It leaves you speechless. We just had Halloween, which is the biggest candy day of the year. And most of that candy on Halloween came from here. And these people only get 2% of that shit. And those kids get none. <laughs> that 2% is going to the fucking slave, the, the, the African slave owners and shit. It's not going to the kids. 
kids get none. Let me drop the link, man. <sighs> yeah, man, nobody's talking about this. No pro-blacks. Have you guys seen any pro-blacks talking about this? Because this story's from, this story, that story on CBS was from today. That CBS story with Gail King was from today. So this is, that's news. This isn't like old shit I'm digging up. This is news. Interesting, man. I'm I'm the fucking coon, man. And you never see the fucking pro blacks or the goddamn whole taps talking about any of this shit. Or the the woke blackly blacks. Never see them giving these stories any shine. I'm the coon, man. What's going on, my guy? What's up, my guy? Yo, how come we always lead to our own parties, man? This shit's crazy. The title of this video is great. Kind of grows our cocoa, so why can't it make chocolate? It's like <laughs> a repeated. Yeah, shit. Yeah, we, crazy. we invented mathematics, but how come shit never adds up? <laughs> <laughs> God. Shit, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. We it's always lit to our own party. Yeah, we always lit to our own party. Two percent of a billion dollar up, like that is okay. fucking sad, man. And now that two percent, them kids get zero. Yeah, you already know that. Shit. Every story Ghana that you is do, the world's second biggest producer of cocoa. No, I was gonna say every story that you do, man. It's like Africa, like the gold. Like the finery, they about to do the finery. Like after all these fucking, you could pretty much do. Africa does our X, so why can't it make its own X or Y? <laughs> Cobalt, whatever the fuck. Yeah, it is, man. that's the first thing I thought of when this when this started. It's like it's it's like a nightmare, man. And this is the golden age of Africa. It was it was worse. In the past, <laughs> talking about ever, yeah, glory. This is this is this is we are in. There was no golden age. This is the golden age. <laughs> Ghana is the world's second biggest producer of cocoa, but the country only earns about two percent of the hundred billion dollar industry. Cocoa growers here export most of their cocoa beans to Europe and North America where they're turned into chocolate. We are shipping out the cocoa in its raw state. And if you look at the value chain of cocoa, money is made in the finished product. While big chocolate companies rake in billions a year, many cocoa farmers live in poverty, earning just $2 a day. And Ghanaian entrepreneurs like Michael have struggled to open chocolate factories in their home country. We are trying to decolonize chocolate this time around, we are saying that it can be done right here. Decolonized chocolate. Mm. This is a night, yo. This literally took the energy out of you. 
I'm like, I got a headache, man. <laughs> Ain't gonna lie, man. This gave me a fucking headache, man. Salute to um, <laughs> salute to Apple Kiss, man. He says pro black. Don't, don't care about no Africans. Yeah, but they talk about their Africa, their roots, and what we did in Africa. They the ones saying that we invented everything. We, we got to decolonize Chaka, but we ain't never fucking hey, had a uh, factory in the whole continent. Please. He said, "Shit took everything out of me. <laughs> I got a headache." Yeah, man. I was all right till they said two two percent of a hundred trillion dollars they give me. God, we shit. Salute to Will. Will says the whole hood couldn't rob enough to get that much money together as the people in Africa get robbed from one white company. The world is ruthless and no guns. Yeah, man. Ruthless, man. But I can't knock those white people, man. They, they, they seem like, look, man. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen with it otherwise. Nothing. Yeah. And, and, and they and, don't and, do it. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I go ahead. Go ahead. No, what I'm saying is that if, if like, like how Black said, if, if there was no demand in white countries for that chocolate, they wouldn't even know what those things were like. If you look at that thing, these um, these these cocoa things, right? Look at that shit. That we wouldn't. That's nothing to black black people who didn't even know what the fuck these was, man. For a million years, for the white man <laughs> figured yeah. out you could make chocolate out of that shit. Right? There's a lot that goes into it, and they're acting like, oh, Africa grows all this fucking cocoa. That don't mean they can make fucking chocolate. Salute to a man Astor. Man, Asti says, he says, once again, Whitey has to end African slave trade. <laughs> right. Right. They got little kids, five year olds, fucking peeling a fucking gazillion of these things a day with a fucking machete. Easy. It's really what, and, it's I, sick. and I don't get mad at the gliders because it's like, they they see an opportunity. It's like y'all are still in this state. Shit, we are gonna take advantage. Like what the fuck, y'all ain't advance. Shit, we are gonna take advantage. Man. This is crazy, man. You got the climate. You got the land to grow the shit. This shit doesn't grow everywhere. This cocoa plant doesn't grow everywhere. So you know that you got the right climate in Africa, and then you got free labor. Like you don't have to pay even Mexicans. You got to pay them something. Africans, they'll just kidnap a bunch of kids and force them into slavery. Yeah, that's just wild. Entrepreneurs like Michael have struggled to open chocolate factories in their home country. We are trying to decolonize chocolate. This time around, we are saying that it really can be done Wakanda. right here in Ghana. Now, the government is funding efforts to grow a domestic chocolate industry. But can Ghana's entrepreneurs get a bigger share of the profits? We visit a cocoa farm and processing plant to find out. Ghana, together with Ivory Coast, grows over 60% of the world's cocoa. The countries sell to all the big chocolate companies. 60% of the world's cocoa. That's wow. That is insane. Yeah, that's, that's fucking unreal, man. That is unreal. The chocolate, like, because I love, like, Listen, man, let, let's be honest, man. Halloween, if you got kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to buy candy. We bought, like, fucking bags and bags. We, we couldn't give all that shit away. We was giving kids, trying to get rid of We couldn't give. We, got, we still got bags and bags of candy upstairs. And that shit comes from here, that little plot of land. My fucking God, man. It was over 60% of the world's cocoa. The countries sell to all the big chocolate companies, from Hershey's to Mars to Nestle, which process the beans abroad in mostly Europe and North America. Bacho, your friend me, Joseph Bacha, at my year cocoa farming for 18 years ago. Joseph grows 11 acres of cocoa, and it isn't easy. Farmers battle more extreme weather due to climate change plant disease, and fatigued land. Every October, 
he and his family begin harvesting the yellow pods. It takes just four days. Joseph collects the pods and takes them to the breaking ground. Here, workers crack them open and remove the beans by hand. If you didn't know what he said, he said that they cut the pods far away from the tree as possible so it doesn't hurt the tree. They don't like cut like close to the tree. And then he said the work they do is painful yeah, all day. So um, salute to um, Laughing Dog. He says two Billy sounds like a square deal for raw product. What is Africa doing with it? Yo, yo, but I, but these Africans are struggling for no reason. Just come here. We're letting everybody in anyway. Fuck it. True. Come here. True. Go to Mexico and then walk across the border. Yeah. I would wear the he collects the, the pods and takes them to the breaking ground. Open. Here, workers crack them open and remove the beans by hand. Joseph uses the leftover pods as compost under his trees. Your boy, we are. Yes, set. Ah, ah, bye. Now, your boot. Eh, wo. Ah, ah, bye. No sooner ya kata su kama. Joseph then dries the beans for another week. In total, he packs seventy-five bags of beans a year. His income is about twenty-seven dollars a day. It's a high wage for a Ghanaian farmer, because Joseph grows twenty-seven dollars a day. So he's not making, so out of the two billion, <laughs> he's making $27 a day. And look what he got going on. This is wild. Grows organic cocoa without pesticides. But many farmers in Ghana live at or below the poverty line, earning less than $2 a day. That's because the majority of farms are small and aren't certified organic, according to Christy, a cocoa That's scholar right. nicknamed the Doc of Chalk. We are talking about really small plots, and this is part of the reason why cocoa farmers are so poor. But that's not the only reason farmers make so little. Cocoa has been farmed in Ghana for over 100 years. There are many parts of the country where the land is really fatigued now, and the trees are old. In the 15th and 16th... <sighs> oh my God. Yeah, man, um... What is Africa doing with that money? <sighs> Blowing it on probably clothes and food. Yeah, food and but I'm talking about the people who are wealthy enough to like oh, oh, be rich they're off they're of living. it. They're, they're living, living buying cars and shit like that and living good, you know? They're, they're not good. jewelry. They're not they always wear gold jewelry. down there. Free investing yeah. in the community. <laughs> no, no way. No way they're doing that. Um, they probably, Mr. Beast probably put a well in some of these places where these people are fucking growing this shit. <laughs> right, right. Yo, if I was one of these oligarchs, I'd put my money into a lot of security guards, armed security. You're going to need that. And the trees are old. In the 15th and 16th centuries, Portugal and Spain monopolized cocoa, controlling production and trade from their colonies in Latin America and the Gulf of Guinea. Europe's elite were the biggest customers. The crop arrived in what's now Ghana in 1876. Around the same time, the British declared the southern region a colony and began invading north. Locals owned and ran all the small farms, but the raw product was exclusively exported to Europe. A lot of what we know today as like contemporary chocolate really grew out of this this trading relationship between Ghana and Britain, including the, the flavor of chocolate itself. Now, if they're getting screwed like that now, imagine what they were getting screwed like in the 15th century. Yeah, like trading relationship. The relationship was, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're, we're getting y'all's fucking cocoa and <laughs> That's more it. and your country. They probably mm -hmm. give them 0.2%. But no, think about the kids back in those days. There was nobody uh, the kids back then. That's a bit ugly. Hopeless. Right. 
Like, I'm pretty sure I would imagine those kids dropping dead on the regular throughout the day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Today, That's, today and, still, losing, and losing fingers and shit. Right. Today oh, yeah. still, I would say still, but not like back then, right? Imagine how many five-year-olds fucking yeah. cut their fucking fingers off. So, five-year-olds doing that shit. Those Caucasoid British came there and ended slavery, but they took their cocoa. It's fucked up. Yeah. Yo, I, I wonder. I wonder how young you can make a kid work. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the lowest age you can put on the work? Yeah, I think it would have to be five, man, because the handle of machete. Yeah, my true. Golly, man, that's that's. I think that's the youngest. I think that's got to be the youngest. Man. Five, five is pretty impressive too, if you think about it. I, I would know. Say that. And to be doing it all day, like to be yeah. cracking open like thousands of them things a day. It, it would be hard <laughs> for me. It would be hard for me not to want to kill whoever's making me do that. You know what I'm saying with that machete? Yeah, but one thing about Africa, Africa's, um, anybody who's African knows this, the beatings in Africa, they take your spirit. Like yeah. when they beat kids over there, it they beat they beat all of that out of you. You don't. You won't have none of that left in you. Yeah. They, they kinda, will beat all of that out of your head. It's, it's kind of like you know the stories you would hear about here. You know, like the slave shaving his master's uh you know beard, and with the mm -hmm. with the blade in his throat, and they never killed them because they right. they broke their spirit, and this is kind of what they knew, right? Exactly. Although Ghana gained its independence in 1957. Its one-way cocoa trade with Europe still exists today, and it's kept farmers at the beginning of the supply chain in poverty for generations. To help raise farmer wages, Ghana and its neighbor Ivory Coast teamed up in 2019. The two largest cocoa producing countries in the world, and so when they get together on something, um, it, everyone has to pay attention. They introduced the fixed price system, which set a price floor for cocoa. In 2020, Ghana set the price floor at $2,600 a metric ton. That included a $400 premium added to every ton of cocoa. And this value goes directly to the farmers. The premium is called the Living Income Differential, or LID. It was the first of its kind in the chocolate industry, and it meant farmers took home nearly 30% more money than the year before. At first, big chocolate companies agreed to pay the LID. You can't really not buy... Ghanaian and Ivorian cocoa, so the, the big buyers really had no choice. The LID's markup may seem like a lot, but the millions it's raised to combat farmer poverty is a fraction of big chocolate makers' sales. But <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Take like, you know, five billion of that. Just build some like geothermal <laughs> geodome in Antarctica to grow more cocoa than Ghana could ever produce, and be like, "All right, later, son, man." Hey, yo, this is. Crazy, I think the yo. reason the reason they still though they don't do that, and the reason they still grow it in Ghana is because the labor source. Yeah, is it's there. so ridiculously easy and cheap. Yeah, because they. Yeah, it's just like that would be. Yeah, that would be a like, wise thing to do. It's just like the products we get from China. It's cheap, and that's why we get the shit from China and the labor we get yeah. from China. Yeah, and, and they got sweatshops over there. It's rough over there too. But this shit, look at that. They get like they gave them this two hundred eighty million was like, all right, y'all, we fucking them so bad. Let's give them a little <laughs> cup, man. <laughs> yeah. Yo, yo, who brought the cocoa to Africa? Because isn't this in a um, Brito land? It said that it came to Ghana, so I'd be interested yeah. to know. Yeah, it was brought yeah. probably from the new from from America. Yeah, if there's the uh, Spanish, it, 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 it yeah, probably, yeah, they it didn't have. It's not native. It's not. We got native the, we got, the, we got cocoa in our island. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. I I know. I that the cocoa come, has roots in uh, Aztecs. I know, like. It, it comes from Umbrito land, but I don't know what. Yeah, it is. From it's, it's from it's from, the, from 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 the Americas, but um, the the climate in Africa it can only grow in certain climates, so Africa got that tropical climate. But maker sales, wow. but soon after it launched, reports surfaced accusing Hershey's of buying cocoa without paying the premium. It's sad to to note that these companies who have the resources and may not want to abide by this simple appeal. 
In an email to Business Insider, the company said Hershey supports and is fully participating in the living income differential. When the corporations do pay, the LID has helped farmers. Now, a moi. It's pushing farmers to even increase their yield. That's how come last year we're able to hit a record 1.2 million tons of beans. After farmers dry the beans, they're bagged up. About 70% of these beans will be sent overseas. Ghana processes only 30% of its cocoa beans domestically. But in 2020, at a press conference in Switzerland, the president announced he wanted to change that. We intend to process more and more of our cocoa in our country with the aim of producing more chocolate ourselves. And he said it right in front of the top commerce ministers of Switzerland, one of Ghana's biggest customers. That statement in, in Switzerland caused a lot of controversy, <laughs> I must say. He clearly mentioned our intentions to put in efforts to also add value within Ghana. To support cocoa processing inside Ghana, the government created a free zone outside Accra. Any factory operating inside gets a tax break. Lloyd Ashley runs niche cocoa industry in the free zone. In the free zone enclave, you are getting 10 years free uh, uh, duty on your important part for equipment. So it gives you the opportunity to also increase capacity. Niche has become Ghana's second largest cocoa manufacturer. The company says it processes 10% of the country's cocoa, and Niche processes two tons of it an hour. The cocoa beans arrive here from farms all over rural Ghana. Workers stack the bags high, then cut them open one by one. The beans funnel into this grate on the floor. And the rest of the process is controlled digitally, from roasting the beans to grinding them into cocoa mass. That's then sent to get mixed with milk and sugar. And from there, it comes here for a tempering process, a cooling process, and then a packaging process. Niche has been pretty successful, but for small companies dark. outside the free zone, it... I may have been hasty. Anyway, it hasn't been as easy to, to get up and running. Hello, come on. Everything okay? Everything's okay. Michael runs Fair Afrique, a cocoa maker that opened in Amanasi to be closer to cocoa farmers. But since it's outside the free zone, it didn't get the tax breaks. Fair Afrique also had trouble buying cocoa beans. As shocking as that may sound, you know, it's really hard in Ghana to procure cocoa beans. Another hurdle keeping Ghana's chocolate industry from taking off? Well, it's very hard to make chocolate in Ghana. For one, there's no dairy industry. Anybody producing chocolate in Ghana is definitely importing large volumes of milk from either Europe or other um, continent. Chocolate makers also have to import sugar, mostly from Brazil. And finally, it's hot in Ghana. Chocolate, by its nature, is very sensitive to temperature. Any rise in temperature may cause the chocolate to melt. There's not the kind of cold chain that you need to distribute chocolate effectively within Ghana or, you know, much of West Africa. And building out that cold chain has been expensive. We have used insulated building materials. <sighs> Let's see what the sun is doing stateside, man. I'm not um, making chocolate, I don't think. <laughs> Something no, to make. Man. Yeah, man, hit the like button. Let's get to 300 likes early. Everybody who hasn't hit the like button, go ahead and hit it. Um, let's get some people to take the $5, $10 challenge via PayPal, Cash App, or Super Chat. Oh man, so, that, so, that, that hurt my head, man. Yeah, yo, so now every time I eat chocolate, I'm gonna feel guilty. Yeah, man, that's kind of fucked up for maybe like 10 seconds. You're you already supposed to feel guilty, guilty every time you used yourself. Not me. I'm just gonna think like my people's is holding it down. <laughs> Shit. <laughs>